Samsung is an anointed and a gracious worshipper, a tenacious lover of God, a great gospel music maestro, a multiple award winner who has graced the stage with gospel greats around the globe. He has an undying passion for gospel music ministry, having recorded and performed great gospel music hits such as Bayanule, Odogu, Turn Me Around, Ide Walk, just to mention a few. Stay tuned for a life-transforming moment on The Worship Experience. Join me. It's actually Genesis 22, mm. the very first place. And there's a principle that, that has to do with uh, um, uh, the principle of first mention mm. in the scripture. Mm. It says that wherever the word is mentioned in the scripture for the first time, gives you a clear understanding of that word. Mm. So worship, the first place was mentioned in Genesis, but it was not about singing. It was not about mm. singing. It, it didn't come as you worship, as singing. It came as an act of obedience. Hmm. Now, there are dimensions of worship. There is a heart dimension of worship. Hmm. There is the act dimension of worship. There is a substance dimension of worship. If we understand this very well, hmm. we would worship God differently. Now, people major more on the act of worship. Hmm. See, the act of worship is that gymnastics of lying on the floor, mm, raising you your know, hands crying, and... you know, raising up <laughs> the hand, you know. But you see, the thing is, it's much more than that. As you are raising up your hand, God is looking beyond the raising up of your hand and he's looking into the heart. Mm. So with all this, my definition of worship would be, um, first of all, recognizing and submitting totally to the will of God at every instant. Mm. First of all, recognizing. Secondly, mm -hmm. submitting. Totally. To the will of God. Totally. To the will of God and His purpose. Mm. At every, that's at every time. Mm. Now, there is no worship without submission. Mm. There is no worship without submission. There's no worship in the place of rebellion. Mm. There's no worship mm. in the place of, yes. Because, you know, that's why I said submit totally. totally. If you are rebellious and you are raising up your hand, it cancels out. It cancels out the benefits of worship. Mm. If you are disobedient to the word of God, and you raise up your hand in place of worship, it cancels, cancels it out. Yes, 
So it's important for us to understand that, that God is more particular about the hearts of worship mm. than the act of worship. Mm. But see, people are carried away by the act of worship mm. and they forget that what God actually looks for to or looks at is the heart uh -huh. of worship. So my definition, therefore, would be that uh, worship is recognizing and submitting totally to the will and purpose of God at every time and mm. in every circumstance. Mm. Awesome. Yes. I don't think I've had anyone explain it in detail like that. Mm. Trust me, that that explains a lot. Yes, because, it explains because, a lot. because you see, most people, I, I mean, it's good to cry mm. in the place of worship. I cry a lot. It's so emotional. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to cry. I, I mean, yeah, we can feel, but see, mm. once you're crying, the heart. We understand it. You know, what I'm just saying is, it's good to lie down on the floor, mm. it's good to raise up your hand. But whilst you're doing all that, understand that God is looking at your heart. Mm. So first of all, you need to first of all clear every form of disobedience. Mm. The things he has said you should do based on the word, have you done them? Mm. Are you rebellious in any way? Mm. No. Then you are free to worship. Worship. Yes. So it's like wow. the prerequisite. <laughs> if, you, if you're disobedient or you're rebellious, then you do not have the right to worship. Wow. So Amazing. that is a prerequisite to worship. Amazing. Yes. I think you've made it clearer to a lot of people yes. more than you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And then my second question is this. Your voice is world class. Thank you. You would have functioned perfectly in any genre of music. Why did you choose gospel? <sighs> okay. Um, I've been asked this question several times. And every time I'm asked, I'm wondering... Did I choose? Did I choose gospel music? Oh, he chose you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because the, because the thing is, I usually say that the only kind of music I can sing is gospel. Mm. So I did not choose a kind of uh, a way of singing. singing. I chose a lifestyle. Mm. I chose a lifestyle. Mm. Now, the lifestyle was what chose the music. Mm. Because we have a lot mm, of <laughs> the lifestyle chooses, chooses, the, music. chooses the music. Yes, I because the that. truth is, we have a lot of unbelievers singing gospel songs. Mm. Lots of people that are not born again singing gospel, gospel songs. songs. So what do we say about that? Mm. They chose the music. Yes, they chose a lifestyle that is incongruous to the music. Mm. So they can decide to sing secular songs. Mm. They can decide to sing gospel songs. Mm. But I chose the life of God. I chose to be born again. Mm. And so, by reason of the lifestyle that I chose, the Christian lifestyle, the only other kind of music that I can sing Just is has gospel to music. Be. Yes. So, um, in response to the question, mm. I, I chose a lifestyle, which mm. is a gospel lifestyle. Yes. The God kind of life. And that God kind of life Led you. now yes. chose the kind of music I would be singing. Mm. So, with all the voice, with all the because um, you do have the voice. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> with all Vocally, that, vocally <laughs> you are amazing. Wait, I thank must you, say. Thank you. Coming from you, I'm. I'm I must actually, say. Uh, and I'm you. so happy you're using it so well for, for the, the kingdom. Yes, you're heard you. everywhere. Your mm. fans cut across every border. Yeah. So I'm very happy about that. Thank you. Man. And so uh, my next question is: We have so many upcoming gospel artists. What would you? advise them to look into or what would be like your general advice for them also what do you think could limit them okay um first of all um when i started singing i didn't know that one could get paid for singing mm. i didn't know you could get rich on singing i mm. didn't know you could be popular on singing mm. you know so as a growing child i thought that people like you know the big names that we hear mm. were businessmen that sing as a hobby oh wow yes so, so i told myself that look i'm going to work in the bank make a lot of money from the bank and then sing as a hobby oh, wow. so that we're using the money from the bank to you because know, i know you're an because, accountant yeah i i, I worked you in the studied, bank okay i started accountancy i worked in the bank and you know but i resigned yes you know so th it was my mentality that led me to all that mm. you know that okay i don't because the kind of life i want to live i don't think i can be a musician and live that kind of life. Mm. So I need something I'll be doing mm. as a professional and then be using that money to sponsor or support my music. Right. But as I grew older, I started understanding that, look, with this that God has given you, yes. he can actually uh, 
um, enrich you yes. in it. Yes. You know. So I said all that to say that for all the upcoming um, aspiring gospel artists um, out there, it's important for you to be passionate mm. about what you do. Be passionate about what you do. Do not put money, the glory, mm. and the fame in front of you. Mm. Because the truth is, if you put glory and the fame that comes with this in front mm. of you, mm. if you wait the first year, second year, third year, you usually get frustrated mm. because your drive mm. is the glory and the fame and the money. So when mm. the money is not forthcoming, you usually get frustrated. But if you're driven by love for it, mm. if you wait the first year, the second year, the third year, money is not forthcoming, the fame is not forthcoming, the love for it keeps you going. Keeps you. Mm. But we know that, like the Bible says, that if we stand, if we keep doing what we're doing diligently, that mm. we'll stand before great men. So it's important to be passionate and love what you do. Mm. Because if you stay consistently doing it, the things you desire... Your time will come. Will come. Definitely to come. The time will so that's come. my little advice. Mm. Okay. Um, can you please tell people in your own opinion what the power of worship is? Um, with mm. personal experience. I have mine. Yes. Um, I used to be a Muslim. Oh. And so... About 12 years ago, I would say, I was driving to a BBC radio interview okay. um, for an audition. And so I was at the traffic light somewhere in Wuse to opposite First 40. Mm. And while the light was on red and I was parked there, it was like they were singing right in front of me. Wow. I could hear music. I could hear something pulling me. And then to my left was a church. And then I just drove in, parked, got down from the car walked into this hall where they were having praise and worship. Praise and worship. And then I stood by the door for a while, just what's going on? What's, you know, enjoying everything. Mm. And then took steps, sat down at the back pew and stayed till the end of service. The minister came, shared the word, and I found myself just working out. So nobody preached to me, nobody invited me, nobody, anything to wow. me. And I, you know, so I'm from that. I know how many testimonies you know, I've experienced personally, I've seen <laughs> God do great and mighty things through mm. worship. So I would like to know, do you have like your own personal experience for worship yes. and personal testimonies that you can share with us yes. to let people understand that even if you're not speaking in tongues and shouting and, you know, yeah, leading prayers and all of that, that yes. via worship things yes. can happen in your life. Yes, I have seen a lame person right in front of me get up from just worshiping God. Mm. I mean, you know, in, in when we do total experience in church, night mm. of place, you know, um, we usually have thought that until pastor comes out and start laying hands, mm. that's when the miracles happen. Mm. But I was amazed. We were in, we were in the big hall, you know, and then we're just worshiping God, worshiping God from one song to the next. And all of a sudden, there was this guy that was brought in a stretcher. Mm. I was amazed. Pastor was not there yet. He hadn't even come out. We we're just worshiping God, and then all of a sudden, the guy just got up and was trying to walk. And Power then all of a sudden, he started walking. I was amazed. I looked at his stage. The pastor is <sighs> not there. How did this happen? You know. And then right from there, we saw people's crutches go up. You know, people were carrying their wheelchair. It's amazing. The power of worship. There was no pastor preaching, no pastor praying. People were just dancing yes. and worshiping God. Yes. Now I have a personal testimony. I got married in 2008, and in 2009, I got a call from, I got married in Edo State, mm. so I got a call from a lady, um, I do not know her, mm. but she got my number and called me and said, Samson, you need to come and see me, or else you will not be able to give birth to a child. So I was like, I don't get it, how, how do you get my number? Said, That's not important. I saw something in the spirit, you know, if you do not come and see me, you will not be able to give birth to a child. I was troubled, but I spoke back to her and I said, it's not possible. Mm. You know, I, because my pastor told me something, he said, whenever you are faced with something, he said, make sure that you, 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 you speak back. Mm. Always speak back. Papa will always say that. Even always if it's a speak dream, back. Speak back. anything that does not edify. Yes, speak back. Yeah. Because it's a, it's a war of words. Mm -hmm. It's a war of us. So when I mm. hear something like, you I will not be able to give birth, I said, that's not possible. Mm. I said, because first of all, I'm a worshiper. 
and I'm a giver. Mm. It's not possible for me not to be able to give it to okay. a child. Mm. She said, well, I'm telling you, if you don't come, you left, so the, the, I cut off the phone. But you know the funny thing? We started, me and my wife, we, started, we kept trying for the whole of 2009. Nothing happened. The whole of the nothing happened. And my wife was wondering, ah, do you not think that maybe we should just go and see, see this, this woman person. and yeah. find out what she saw? Because mm. I mean, how come? Because mm -hmm. we have done all the medical checkups. Everything. The doctor says, look, you guys are sound. I don't know why this is happening. Mm. But look, I don't know. So I was, I got a little bit worried. Mm. But well, all this changed in one night. It was a worship concert. It was an all night worship concert. So we're worshiping God. I was called, I was the special guest. Mm. So we're just worshiping God, worshiping God. I didn't know, all of a sudden, I didn't know what happened. I fell down on the floor. So you can imagine a, an invited guest falling down on the floor <laughs> and rolling from one end to the other. You know, but I did, at that time, I did not even know yes. what was going on. Mm. I was just rolling from one end to the other. People were dan dancing, people were singing. The atmosphere was saturated with the power of God. Mm. I could. You know, so by the time I, I was there for almost 20 minutes, mm. that tears was just, I, I didn't know what was happening to me. Yes. And then I, when I got up, I felt as light as a leaf. I knew something, something had, happened had happened to me. I now got, got back to my room that night and I slept, you know, and right in, right while I was sleeping, in my, I was, I was seeing, you know, visions of baby. I mean, babies crying. I'm just here, baby's crying. Mm. I'm like wondering what. I wake up. I'm like, what is going on? What? You know, I was sleeping in, and then, if I, you know, so I was wondering. So I called mm. my wife the next morning and said, "Look, I know that we have victory in the spirit because mm. last night I had a pro the program I went for. I fell down. It has never happened to me before. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, it's never happened to me. That was the first time. And then she said, "Oh, you fell down." So what happened? I said, I fell down. People were looking at me like I was crazy. But you know, I knew victory had come, come to us. And then at night I was sleeping. I was hearing the cry of babies mm -hmm. every, everywhere. All of this from a worship. From a worship session. A session. From a worship session. A worship session. You know. So um, the because I went, slept. It was an all night. So mm. I slept in the, the morning. It was a short sleep. Mm. You know, by slept by 5.30 woke up by nine o'clock that little time i was hearing cries of babies so i called my wife and told my wife look i've just been hearing babies crying mm. you know and she was like oh are you serious you know should we pray by i said well the truth, would you, let's be just let's just be thankful because i know that victory had happened but the truth is it was nine months exactly after oh, then my it was nine months exactly i could calculate because i knew when i went for the program yes. it was nine months exactly Exactly, and then we got um, a baby boy, mm. you know. But you see, the story changed from a place of worship. Mm. Now we have three boys from a place of worship. Worship. So you can imagine, I, I believe. So a man strongly. that was told that you will not have children. Children. Now we have three boys. Now you have three boys. Yes, but see, it was from a place of worship. So I, I, mm. I do not when. It
into the worship experience. Stay tuned.
it like you know it. Sing it like you know it. Say, and because you're God, we've come to Somebody worship him. He's mighty in this place. His presence is mighty in this place. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty, endless worth. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Oh, Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty and less worth. Nothing in this world, nothing that they can give can satisfy, no. Oh, Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Because your presence is heaven to me. How long do you feel the same way? How long do you feel the same way? I am your prayer. God, my help, my hope, my strength, and my life belong to you. Oh, you are God, my help, my hope, my strength, and my life belong to you. It belongs.
Holy Sabini, you are the God of the heaven. I got me poor, hallelujah, poor. Hallelujah, pa. If for my email, on my poor, we call, or Bugini, come get it. Warachi, Otobunagati, everybody. Otobunaga.
Somebody watch it.
fighting on your own. Kado, Kado, you are mighty on your own. Kado, Kado, you are mighty on your own. Kado, Kado, you are mighty on your own. Come on, somebody help me tell him. Kado, you are mighty. You are mighty on your own. Listen, this is a place where you need to lay down your crown. Lay down your crown. This is a time where you have to lay down your burdens. In the presence of God, who you are does not matter. In the presence of God, his presence is the only thing that matters. Jesus is the only thing that matters. In the presence of God, everything you desire is available. All you need to do is connect. Connect. All you need to do, open your spirit. Let God heal you. Let God do his work in you. Let God do his work in you. You are mighty on your throne. Mighty. You are mighty on your throne. Kado. Kado. You are mighty on your throne. Kado. Kado. We give you
this place. You are glorious in this place. You are faithful in this place. You are mighty in this place. You are awesome in this place. You do mighty things in this place. You do glorious things in this place. In your presence we find answers. In your presence we have contentment. You awesome God. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are.
falling down already my pastor says whatever you do by the spirit of God produces positive results the presence of God is the answer of God listen whatever it is that you desire don't go about searching for the solution search for God's presence whatever it is that you, are, that you desire don't go searching for it search for God's presence because in his presence is the answer that you seek in his presence you find contentment in his presence there is fullness of joy
down everything that we know as human beings. Our certificates, our professionalism, the things that we have learned, our know-how. And we have followed a particular person that said, look, just trust me, follow me and I will show you. Said, don't worry, don't worry. I, I, the contract, I will give it to you. And then what, everything you knew, you laid it aside and followed that person. The person said, this sickness, I know who can help you come out of it. And then everything you knew, you laid it down and followed that person. How many times have they made promises to you and failed? How many times? And then the bad thing is, by the time you come back to your sense, you feel so bad. Like, how did I get here? But the Bible says, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the man that will trust in God. Because in him, you find everything. He can never fail. He can never disappoint you. He can never leave you by yourself. He said, I will be with you. Till the end of days, I will be with you to the end of the time. So when he says, I am your way maker, he means that I will make a way. Even when it seems like there is no other way, I will pave a way for you. Men say there is no way, but I say there is a way I can make it. When we call him the promise keeper, it means that against every other odds, he says, I will do it. It doesn't matter, even if the heavens come down, he'll do it. He's a promise keeper. He's a miracle worker. That's the God that we serve. Can I get a witness here? Can I, if you have tested me, miracle worker. We may, that is who, I'm sure I want to help me sing one more time. Say, oh, we may, God, miracle, promise keeper. Just wave your hands to him. Yes, you are worthy of my praise. Whoa, you are worthy of. You know, 
I just remembered the story in the Bible. The king said, everybody in this land must bow before my God. Everyone. He said, if you don't bow before my God, you'll be thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. The three Hebrew boys said, oh king. He said, we have a God they said we will not bow before this God because we have a God that can deliver us from the fire yes, sir. he said but even if he chooses not to deliver us yes, sir. we will still not bow down yes, sir. we will not bow down why? because that your God is not worthy he's not fit to receive Worship is for those people that know their God. Worship is for those people that have a revelation of their God. The way you worship God determines, I mean, the, the, the revelation of, of God to you shows how you worship Him. If your revelation of Him is shallow, you worship Him like that. But if you have a deep revelation of God. You will worship him with relish like he's everything that matters to you. That's why the Hebrew boy said, look, king, we know a God. <laughs> we know a God that can deliver us. They didn't say, look, we are scared of entering the fire. No, if you put us in the fire, we know a God that can deliver us from it. Even if our God says he will not do it, we will still not bow down to your God. We are not careful to answer you. We are not careful to answer you. Because we know that only him alone is worthy. That's why we say tonight, you are worthy of our praise. Come on, somebody wants to join me, say, Yes, you are worthy of my praise. Oh, oh, oh. you are worthy of my praise. Got married in 2008, and I told the woman of God my testimony. And a lady called me from Edo State and said, Samsung, you need to call me, or else you will not be able to give birth to a child. And I spoke back to her and said, That is not possible because I am a worshiper, a true worshiper. Listen. While men are going about searching for a God, God is seeking for a worshiper, a true worshiper. And I said, true worshippers do not make requests. Come on now. True worshippers just worship him. Come on now. Come on now. It is his responsibility to take care of your distractions. You do not have what it takes to take care of your distraction. It is an abomination for a God to worship himself. Even the Bible says, it is not glory for any man to glory in himself. It is an abomination for a king to worship himself. That is why they have worshippers. But it is the responsibility of the God or the King to take care of every of your distractions so you can focus. If you say you are a worshiper and you are still living under, check yourself. Worship is beyond lifting up of your hands. Worship goes straight into your heart. Straight into your heart. I said earlier that most of us are carried away by the act of worship. There are dimensions of worship. Most of us are carried away by the act of worship. But there is the heart dimension. Heart dimension. 
There is the act dimension. And there is the substance dimension. When we talk about the heart of worship, we talk about the who are we worshiping. When we talk about the act of worship, we talk about the how do we worship. All your lifting up of your hands, jumping, crying, and dancing. Whilst you're doing it, God looks at you. He loves it. But he goes straight into your heart and says, He looks in there. Is there any kind of disobedience? There is obedience in worship. I said to the woman of God earlier, I said the first place that worship was mentioned, it was not about music. It was all about obedience. How can a man that knew that he was going to sacrifice his son tell his friends, said, wait here. I will take my son up into the mountain. How did he call that worship? He knew he was going to sacrifice his son. But he said, I will take him up for us to go and worship. That's a man that trusts God without any reasonable doubt that he is able. Somewhere down the scripture, the Bible said, because he trusted in his God. There is no worship without trust. There is no worship without trust. Whilst we are worshiping him here, you should be able to say, Father God, I'm a true worshiper and I trust you that those things I've left out there in the world to come here to what you are able to take care of them. That before I leave here, you would have handled it. That's the life of a true worshiper. A life of outright dominion. Countless victories. I said it. If you are a true worshiper and you are still living under in life, check yourself. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. The woman called me and said, you must see me or else you will not be able to give birth to a child. And I said to her that I'm a true worshiper and it's not possible for me to leave married and not have siblings. Oh, sorry, children. I know the way the devil works. The whole of that year, 2009, me and my wife kept trying. First month, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelfth month, nothing happened. My wife got a little bit jittery and said, Do you not think that maybe we should uh, find out from this lady? Maybe she knows something that will help us. And I said to her, I said, We will not meet that lady. For the singular reason that by the time our prayer request has been turned into a testimony, all the glory will be given back to God and not to any woman. Because if we meet her and she says, This and this and this are you are supposed to do, and we do it, all the glory goes to her. That, oh, that lady knew what our problem was. But I said, No, we will not meet her that all the glory, so that when God has done it, we will know where the solution came from. And it was just one night of worship that turned our lives around. In the place of worship, just like this, we were worshiping God like it's our last chance. We were worshiping him like we were not going to have another chance to worship. And right there, the victory came. I didn't know what happened. I was lying on the floor. That night, I dreamt and I heard babies crying, crying. I was wondering, why am I hearing babies crying? And I woke up and called my wife and said, get ready. Something good is happening to us. Nine months exactly, my wife gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. Whose report do you believe? In the place of worship, we re I, I want to just trust him like a little child. Trust him like a little child. And so today when I say, hey, say, you are worthy of my praise. Oh, you are worthy of my praise. 
I sing it with understanding. I sing it with revelation. You are because him alone has done praise. what no other man could do. Oh, 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 oh. You, you are worthy of last time. Say! Hey, hey. You are worthy. Can we celebrate him one more time? But will it be selfish of me if I ask for one song? I'm sure you know. Let's do that one song. Just that one song. We may be seated. I, I, I will depend on you. I will depend on you. I'll depend on you, my friend. Dear Holy Spirit, you will lead me till the end. No matter what the circumstance may be, no height, no depth, no principality, no things that are or even things to come, I'll depend on you. You always see me through. I will depend on you. Ah. I'll depend on you, my Lord. Dear Lord Jesus, you're the Savior from above. You died and rose. Forever you are the same. Now let the whole world know that Jesus reigns supreme. I'll depend on you. You always see me through. I will depend on you. Oh. Jesus, you guide me by the power of your hand. I'll take the land. You hold me, Jesus. You mold me. I'm the pot. I'm the pot. You're the pot around the clay. Lord, have your way. Oh, you. Jesus, you guide me yes, Lord. by 
by the power of your hand, I'll take the land. You hold me, Jesus, you mold me. You're the potter and the clay, Lord, have your way. Oh, I I will depend on you. Oh, I, I will depend on you. I'm sure you want to join us and see. I will. I to do that one. That's, that's my song. I actually wrote that song in the spirit and it ministered to you and God gave it to you and you sang for people like us. Let's celebrate him. Thank you all so, so much for joining us the worship experience with Pastor Deborah Omale. I hope you have all been blessed. For those of you that will watch on Divine Hand TV on our YouTube Anywhere you come across this worship experience, your life will never remain the same. And the prayer is all that you desire will manifest in your life. In Jesus' name. God bless you all so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Samson. Thank you.